it's really short and sweet. Just want to get you used to the, um, the machine itself, get you used to the button pushing, some little clinical morsels here and there. Um, but before we get started, I wanted to show you a couple of um, additional resources that you can consult for further info. So I'm going to bring up my uh, web page here. All right. And I wanted to call your attention to acplus.com. Again, not acpplus.com, but acplus.com, because there's a variety of features that you could um, seek out to continue building on some of the foundation we're going to present today. And the biggest one I want to show you is the Partner Resource Center. Now, your clinical program consultant can provide you with the information for how you can get access to the Partner Resource Center. Perfect. All right. Sorry, guys. But yeah, just to reorient you to everything, this is acplus.com. And there's an education tab right here that'll pull up a drop box. And you can pick partner resources like I did. And it'll bring up this screen where you can type in anything that you want to search. Maybe it's contraindications, warnings, precautions. Maybe it's something on the Omniversa. Just throw in Omni SWD and you can see a variety of topics pop up. Pop up. Some of it's just really quick, minute or less, step-by-step -step video on how to use the machine. Some of it is how to do output tuning, if that comes up. You can even get access to the manual if you need, um, marketing information, just a plethora of really good information. So don't be afraid to sign, uh, to search for those features on AC+. Um, another thing that does come up quite a bit is the contraindications, the warnings, and the precautions. Now, the contraindications are built into your unit, and I'm going to show that to you with some of the button pushing. But I do like to reference this chart. This is uh, version 12 of our contraindications, warnings, and precautions uh, cross-reference matrix. And just to orient you here, this first column is diathermy, whereas the second is ultrasound and the third is e-stim. And um, what we really want you to know is that this is on the carts in your facility. Typically, it's in some type of pocket um, on the carts of the machine where it's stored. Um, if you don't have access, though, we can easily send this to you digitally so you do. Okay, so I'll, I'll review that again as we go through the uh, product features. So I'm going to stop my share here. I'm going to start taking you through the machine itself. And I always like to start from the ground up. So I'm going to take you down to the ground level, if you don't mind. So I'm going to move this here. And this is our Omni SWD unit, okay? And uh, the reason I wanted to start from the ground up is because you'll notice that from the back of the machine here, um, we have the plug. And you'll notice there's no battery option with the Omni SWD. It's only powered by wall. So you want to make sure that this cord is plugged in. And what I like about our new Omni SWD is that it has a lock built into it. And I like to show this to people because it's not often, it's not often that you'll see equipment have a feature like this. This little red tab can be moved up and down. It's on a spring. And that's meant so that once you plug it in, it locks automatically. So if you did try to pull it or if your foot hit it or something happened while transporting the unit, it's going to stay nice and secured. I really like that feature. We've gotten really good feedback about that. But be aware so you don't try to muscle it and, um, and you know, maybe cause damage to the cord or yourself. Okay? Now, with that, I'm going to try to get in a little closer for you. There is a power switch here. Um, this has been put in by code to allow us to cut off power to the unit even if the machine is plugged in. So you want to make sure that this switch is in the position where there is a straight line, meaning that current can get in as opposed to the circle, which means that current cannot get in. Um, I definitely like pointing this out because oftentimes clinicians will call me and say that they're trying to power on their unit and it's not getting any juice. Usually the culprit is uh, right here, maybe that got accidentally switched in the opposite position. Okay. Now a final feature while we're going through all this is the locks. And you'll notice that the Omni SWD has a lock available on each wheel, okay? Um, I don't usually advocate for pushing that with your fingers, okay, for investment control purposes. But whenever you are going to use the Omni SWD, you want to make sure that each lock is deployed um, at each wheel, okay? Now for sake of demonstration, I'm going to unlock these so it's a little bit easier, but I will get back to that as we go through a few more items. So I'm going to take you up about midway through the unit here, because the main thing I want you to see is this coax cable. Now what happens is the, the Omni SWD is going to pull some current from the wall. This is actually a generator to get the frequency where we need it to be. And it's going to send that through this coax cable up to the drum. Okay. Now a lot of clinicians don't realize that this um, coax cable can be removed quite easily. You just have to give a counterclockwise turn and it comes right off the unit. The same is true at the, uh, the drum itself. So it does not matter which end goes into the unit and which one end goes into the drum. 
I just ask you to periodically check your machine. If you receive it where the cord is really tangled up on itself, definitely just remove it and um, reapply so that you can maintain the life of your um, coax cable. If it were damaged or frayed in any way, shape, or form, you'd get an error message and it would tell you to um, either contact us or try to resolve it on your own, okay? So I'm just gonna reattach this here. It seats itself and I'm gonna turn it clockwise and I'm gonna do the same at the drum. And I'm gonna give you more of a profile view here. So I'm gonna move the unit this way, actually. Okay. So what we're looking at here now is the lock mechanisms that you're noticing. I think if I bring this up, it'll be a little bit easier for you to see all three of these. Um, there are three points of articulation to kind of get this drum where you want it to be when you're doing patient care. So you have one here, you have one here, and then you kind of have a third one at the drum, but it's kind of a positional lock where you just move the drum and it stays in place, okay? Now to do that, what I want you to first consider is that there's a grip right on the arm here. And what I usually recommend, it's got a little um, striation, kind of like a rough a, a pattern to it. It's meant for you to hold on to it so that you can turn each of these locks um, counterclockwise and you can now position the drum any um, way that you need for patient care, okay? Um, but do hold on to that, that handle as you're doing that so the drum doesn't accidentally slip out of your hand and hit the ground or anything like that. And you simply tighten it clockwise in order to get uh, the brake reapplied. Okay, now there's another reason why I bring up this little handle for you, and it's because you can remove the drum oftentimes um, for servicing or for the patient who just simply can't be positioned appropriately with this drum, I'm sorry, with this arm. And to do that, I'm just going to keep this straight. You want to make sure that this spot right here is not showing any white. So I can turn this grip counterclockwise, and you'll see how a white neck has been exposed. Now there's actually a warning sticker on here that's telling you, please don't leave this rusting with this white neck exposed. It means that the drum is loose and it can slip off of the plastic peg that it attaches to. So I'm just gonna remove this just like so, and you'll notice my coax cable is still connected. I'm removed from the drum, um, but now I can kind of position this as needed. And it's kind of nice. I've used this for posi uh, positioning under patient's knees when I can't get full extension. Uh, for a tough rib fracture and the patient doesn't want to come out of the uh, come out of their chair, I can rest this on top of a pillow and keep their arm on top of it if needed. There's a lot of clever uses. As long as the coax cable is connected, you should be good to go. Now, as far as replacement, you'll notice that this, like I said, looks like a plastic peg. It does not matter which side you insert this to. Um, just go ahead and put it back where you found it and tighten up this uh, in a clockwise position, the handle grip, and you're good to go, okay? Now, a final thing while we're looking at this is I want to point out the tuner knob, and hopefully you can see it from this vantage point. This can be turned clockwise or counterclockwise, and that'll come up as I show you the button pushing as a feature for tuning the coil that's inside this drum should it ever go out of alignment, okay? Now, maybe a final thought for application is just try whenever possible to keep the arm pointed towards your patient as you apply it. It just allows for maximum degrees of freedom. It's not that you can't position the arm over the drum, I'm sorry, over the machine this way. You're just not gonna have as much opportunity for positioning um, for patient care. All right, now with that, what I'm gonna do is show you some of the features for the button pushing. Now to set up, I'm just gonna move this drum all the way out of the way. I think that'll kind of clear up some of the, uh, what I wanna show you. I'm gonna set my brakes here. And you'll notice now, hopefully this is in view here okay. There we go. Now the main power button is just to the right of the screen and you just push that once. There should be a lime green color if everything's working properly and the switch is in the right position and the plug is where it needs to be. And then this is what your home screen is going to look like, just like so. And I might give it just a little bit more light here so you can see that maybe just a little bit better. Okay, and with your home screen, if you're used to the Omniversa, this is very synonymous. You have your indications, manual mode, favorites, system settings and contraindications, okay? And I'm gonna take these a little bit in reverse order if you don't mind. Um, I did mention earlier, some of the contraindications have been built into the machine based off of that matrix we went over. So I'm gonna hit contraindications and notice that it says page one of five in the upper right. You can kind of scroll through that as, as needed just by pushing the arrows to the right of the screen and you'll see different information with clinical morsels for documentation, for application, uh, for clinical decision-making, all kinds of good stuff. So I, I definitely like pointing that out. Um, the contraindications here are really all that's mentioned, not the warnings and precautions. It's 
not to say that those aren't important, but the intent was to really deliver the most important information to the clinicians, and then you can consult your um, uh, CPC or um, you know, the reference that the cross-reference matrix that I gave you for further info. Okay, so you'll notice in the upper left there's a back button which takes you to whatever screen you were on previously, and then there's the home screen that takes you back to that original home um, screen that we went over. Okay, so contraindications are on the bottom. System settings is just above that. And notice that there's not a whole lot that you can change here, but maybe the screen brightness isn't where you want it to be. You can change that up and it'll store it. I'm going to hit the back button now this time to go on the previous screen. Um, speaker setting, if you don't like the beeps when the machine is done or as you're hitting the buttons, you can adjust that. Um, there's also some maintenance features that you might want to occasionally uh, go after if cued by your clinical consultant. It's a lot of problem solving built into it. Um, I think the main thing that you'll want to be aware of on this setting is uh, on the system setting screen is the device output tuning. I love this feature. If I click on that, it's going to let you know is the coil calibrated. So notice that if I hit start just to test the, the, the coil, you'll see a large green bar to the right of the middle divider here. So I kind of say there's a black line in the middle and to the right of that you're going to see a, um, a long green bar. And if you got a good eye, you might see to the left of that divider in the middle a very small yellow um, bar. And that's proper tuning. You want the green bar to be as high as it can be and the yellow bar to be as small as it can be. That's proper tuning. So you can see that this device is properly tuned. Should it ever go out of tuning, you'll be cued to address that by using that tuning knob that I showed you earlier on top of the drum. Okay. Now you can have the tuning bar on or you can select it, it, for it to be off um, so that it doesn't pop up on some of the treatment screens that I'm going to show you next, okay? So you just have to remember device output tuning. You can turn the tuning bar on or off. I recommend leaving it on. I think it's a great visual cue to make sure that you're optimizing the dose of energy to your patient, okay? So we're going to go back home now. We covered contraindications. We covered system settings. I'm going to start taking you through indications, manual mode, and favorites next, okay? Now, why I love how this machine is set up is indications will guide you. Maybe you're a new clinician, you're not used to using Omni SWD, you want to see what options are at your disposal right here. Indications is going to be for you. Notice that we have a whole bunch of um, options. They're all consistent with what the research shows now that diathermy can be used for. And why I think that's so great is just by using this list, you're doing evidence-based uh, medicine. Okay. Now, if you don't need to be guided, if you feel like you have a good handle on this and you just want to hit a button and go, I'm going to get the back button here. That's what manual mode would be for. So if I select manual mode, you'll notice it's saying variable, one delta T, two delta T, four delta T, which one do you want to use and go. Okay. And just as a refresher, guys, if you don't remember the one delta T, delta implies change. And what we're saying here is that we want to change the temperature of the tissue being treated by one degree Celsius. Okay, and then the two would be two degrees and the four would be four degrees. So you can think of this as maybe a, a mild, moderate, or a vigorous heating, okay? Um, and the variable is the subthermal option. It doesn't quite cause a, a heating effect as a, a net heating effect towards the end of treatment. So typically, whatever the patient's tissue temperature was before you applied it, it's the same temperature after, okay? So that's manual mode. I'm going to go back to indications just to help teach you a little bit more on that. Maybe we'll, your patient has some pain that's associated with a frozen shoulder, and you want to help them with that pain. So notice that if I hit relieves pain, it's going to ask you, well, is this acute, is this subacute, or is this chronic? So again, it's guiding that clinical decision making. Maybe you're a little caught up between, well, this is kind of chronic, but kind of time maybe it's acute on chronic. You're not really sure what decision to make. You can hit the info tab next to the selection. So not the actual selection itself, but the info tab next to it, and you can get a, a variety of info on the VAR setting for pain. Built in, notice it says page one of six in the upper right here, and it has a variety of pictures that the CPCs often present during um, on-site lectures and labs. Okay, again, lots of clinical morsels here for documentation, billing purposes, clinical decision making, just wonderful stuff. So to recap here, I'm just going to go back. Um, keep in mind that if you go under indications, you will be guided. But if you go under manual mode, you will not be guided. You won't have access to those pictures and all that, um, the phrase, phrases, things that we went over. Okay. 
So going back to indications, if I continue with that pain example that I gave you, maybe you read up on if acute and you read up on subacute, you decided, huh, acute's the way I want to go. So I can hit the actual word acute and you'll notice the treatment screen. Okay, it's kind of short and sweet. Um, the timer is set at 30 minutes. The start and stop button are there. Here's that device output tuning um, uh, bar graph that I was showing you before. You could simply hit start if you'd wish to, and the machine will start kicking on. Again, you can see the device output, the, the drum is in tune, and the timer is counting down, okay? Now, if you want, there's a stop button right there. Perhaps you don't have 30 minutes, even though it might be desired. Maybe you only have 20, and you want to change it. You can change it under uh, manual mode. I'm going to go back. There we go. If I hit manual mode and I hit variable, I can select the time and I can change it. Maybe 20 minutes is all I can get in instead of that 30. That's okay. We hit 20, we hit enter, it's stored, and we're good to go. Um, another feature that I like about manual mode is it allows you to change two key things with, with associated with diathermy, which is the pulse duration and the pulse rate. Now, if you don't want to worry about that, you could just accept our defaults that we provide you with, or maybe you read a study that the pulse duration should be increased to 100. All you have to do is hit the button and it changes it, and you can go ahead and treat and practice the evidence-based uh, medicine that you intend to practice, okay? So it's really kind of a nice feature. Um, maybe you feel so strongly that that change is needed, you might want to save it, okay? There's a floppy in the upper right. I'm going to hit that. And notice that I can call this program whatever I want to. I can hit program three. I can call it, um, we'll just say upper extremity pain. And we're going to save that. And notice that upper extremity pain is now stored with the settings that I had um, done. And I can select any of my favorites if I want to. Notice that as I select them, there's a variety of options that pop up on the right. It'll say, do you want to run this, edit, or get rid of it altogether? I could just hit run. And the settings we had at 20 minutes and 100 for the pulse duration have been stored. Okay, now this is really handy, guys. I've actually seen some interesting interactions between uh, PTs and their PTAs. Um, and as well with OTRs and their corresponding COTAs, where sometimes what they'll do is just save the setting and say, please use this one to kind of clarify any kind of problems um, when an assistant is covering care or some other clinician is covering care. So kind of handy, use it as you want to. Now going back home, we covered indications, we covered manual mode, the final one is just favorite. You can access that from the, the home screen and that's a quick access to what we just went over, okay? So, all right, so with all that, I believe we've covered what I wanted to go through. I'm going to switch back to my computer now, and let's see if we have any questions that have popped up. There we go. Oh, hello. There I am. All right, guys, well, hopefully this has been helpful for you as far as figuring out the general operation of the Omni SWD, some of the safety features, storage features, a lot of stuff that you can do with this machine. Um, if you don't have any questions, I thank you so much for your time. And